friends of Brush Strokes and Bisque painting live on Thursday night, August 27th. Um, hold with us for a few minutes because we're having some technical difficulties here today. It's been a day of technical problems. So Courtney's giving me the thumbs up the way it looks. Are we close enough or is it too far away? So hold on, we're gonna making some adjustments here, but so we're we're good at the way it looks. So it's August 27th and we have our August box, which is our hedgehogs, which is hedgy heaven. And these are the painted versions that we're gonna be working on. We have the mama one and then our stand up one and our laying down one. So if you received the box, it would have um, looked something like this. And inside there we have the inventory sheet in our cute little package. And then if you flip that over, we have all our extra goodies inside here. Um, so we have our inventory sheet. And then with that, we have our Clay Magic flyer that has our hedgehogs on it. And then we have our technique sheet that um, I create and Courtney um, puts on our nice little um, cardstock for us. And then as a little extra, because these guys didn't have glitter and all kinds of little extras, we did the Brenda's Bisque Box eye tutorial chart with step-by-step -step instructions and then the little pictures to go with it. This also goes with the eye tutorial um, video that has the piggy bank eyes, which are the same eyes. They're good eyes for just about anything. Um, just a simple um, little eye and you could change out the colors from blue to if you wanted green or brown eyes, but um, this was exclusive for our Bisque Box. And then we have our, um, a little bit of sample of our gloss sealer that we use to put on our hedgehog's eyes so that they look nice and wet. And I'll put that aside so we don't lose this. And then our extra in our box um, this month, which is our big one, which was a retail value of $7.99. It's our um, size eight flat brush from our artist paintbrush, size eight flat brush. I um, mean, you want to just run your fingers through there and that'll soften that up and get that sizing out of there and then you're ready to use that to dry brush. Um, so we really enjoy using these brushes. The paint seems to go on really well with them. So that one's going in my tray. I just confiscated it. Courtney's smiling at me. <laughs> so we'll put our little things aside here. I'm going to use that yet. And then inside our box, you would have found our... Um, little packages they're all bubble wrapped nice and they all have little um, stickers on them telling you what they are and then if you ordered extra bisque that bisque or brushes or anything like that paint that fit in the box um, we do cover the shipping on that you just message us through messenger and then Cordy adds it to your invoice and you just pay your invoice and as long as we can get it to fit in your box we cover the shipping so we have our number one is our mama hedgie you can see they're wrapped up really well so we don't have breakage. And we have um, Cone 04 Fired Bisque. So if you didn't want to use the acrylics on it, you could use the um, Fired products. So here's our Mama Bisque, Mama Hedgie. And then we have Baby Bella and Baby Tasha. get those guys open. So our July box did take a little bit longer because our elves had lots of um, deca detail on them, but these guys will go pretty quick. Um, there's lots of, lots of detail, so it um, brushes on there real quick. Um, so I did paint them with the very light face, but if you look on your Clay Magic flyer, they do have a different colored um, different face so we should be able to do one um, with this darker face like the flyer has um, we should have enough extra time to do that so that way you can have a um, couple ways to do your little guy or your girl I 
guess they're both girls, huh? Bella and Tasha, them are both girls. Well, actually, they're all girls. So is the mama. Huh? Baby Hedge? Just Baby Hedge? Okay. So it could be a boy. You could even add a little um, bow ribbon to one of them if you wanted, or a little bow tie to one to make them a girl or a boy. And this is our other one. Um, so to save a little bit of time, so these were your bisque pieces. Again, they're fire to cone for, so if you don't want to use the acrylics, you can use the glazed um, or fired products on them. They shouldn't have any problem. Um, so I did base coat our pieces. To, actually, Courtney did this for us today. Mm -hmm. um, and they were base coated black, or you could color wash them with the black. Um, so to base coat them, you just use your black paint. Um, let me see, where's our black? We had to get new black today. So I, she just used our OS476 black, our bisque stain. It's an opaque acrylic from Duncan. Um, you will find if you use the ceramic brand paints like Duncan, Doc Holliday, and Mako, you will have better coverage. And you will also not have the brush marks strokes on your pieces. They, um, it kind of self levels when it dries, so you will have better, um, quality paint and probably a better result. I've had a couple of messages this week with people having trouble with their paint and basically they're using the cheaper um, craft store paints which do work um, but they do take more coats and it can be a little more frustrating to you so you may find the ceramic branded paints even though they cost more um, they do cover better. So these have been base coated earlier this afternoon which Courtney did it and she's not our painter so Kudos to Courtney. Mm -hmm. And since we have them color, we have them base coated and with the black, the other thing you could do is color wash them with the black, which would be 50% water and 50% black paint, and then just brush it on there and then wipe it off with a damp sponge on the high areas and leaving it in the dark areas. Um, our December video would have um, color washing on it if you don't know how to do that with our snowmen. Um, so then our next instruction on our directions is to dry brush saddle brown over our black so we can do that um, so I do have our Duncan saddle brown or yep black brown sorry black brown we gotta start with black brown first number two um, so we have our black brown OS 473 black brown let me give that a little shake and we'll get a little bit of the black brown and it is a bigger piece um, with um, not a lot of little fine detail like our elves had, so you can use a bigger brush to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, for dry brushing, you would like to use a boar bristle brush, which is a natural hair brush um, with natural hair bristles in it. So you wouldn't want to use a little bitty one like this. You could if it's the only one you have, but it will take you longer. Um, so if you have a bigger brush, about a size 8, um, that'll go a lot quicker. Um, so we'll dry brush each of our guys with our um, black-brown here. And I got my finger in the paint the way it looks. So I'll better wipe that off. And I do have paint in my fingers because we were video, video recording our mummies. Um, so that can be in the... Um, it'll be the pre-recorded video that you guys will have access to right away so you don't have to wait for the um, lives on Thursday night if you're a early painter. So I just dabbed my brush into my black brown and I'm going to brush it out on my paper towel and you can see the, the more I brush it the less paint I'm getting and you want to have just so that your paper towel is being um, stained a little bit with the black brown. And now all his, you want to look at your texture and all his little fur is kind of going that way so we actually want to go across it in the other direction and we want to cover up the majority of the black leaving the black down in all the crevices of his little texture because that is going to be the shadowing and shading on your piece giving it um, dimension um, so now we'll just keep grabbing our black brown and brushing out our brush and we'll just go back and forth across our texture. I start in one area, kind of get a nice little coverage here. Keep grabbing my paint and brushing it out. And I could work this way or I can work this way and then that way. 
Um, you, you don't want to keep doing this area until it's completely done. You want to keep moving and letting that area dry. So now we'll move to the next little um, like three by three area here. And again, just dry brush back and forth across it and build up that black brown. So Courtney has given me, um, looks like we got some questions. Um, so Dee says, Brenda, when starting to paint a piece, how do you decide to base coat in black or black brown, like the gnomes or other pieces. Um, so usually for wildlife, I will use the black. Um, like for the little elves, we used a black brown or a brown because we have a lot of um, flesh colors. So when I have a lot of flesh colors um, on the piece, I do like to go with a brown instead of the black because I think the black is kind of harsh. Um, and then um, even to grow on that for this for like snowmen I like to use a blue a, like a navy or a dark country blue or a really dark purple or a dark turquoise um, instead of the black because that just gives the snowmen a really harsh look as well um, so I do like to use like the blues and the navies and the turquoises on the penguins and the snowmen but something with a lot of flesh I prefer to use more of the black brown or a dark brown. Uh, most wildlife, I guess I probably start with the black. Uh, probably Halloween pieces, probably more with the black because it has the black and the oranges. So it kind of, it kind of depends upon your piece and how, how you want, how strong you want that shading to be that's in the crevices. Um, black is actually very popular color to use for dry brushing as your base coat. Um, but you can change it out and use other colors, so um, I just kind of like the brown when there's a lot of flesh on a piece, so I hope that helps. Um, so let's see, then we have, Dee says again, so for the, for the trucks, do you dry do you base in black? Um, yep, for the trucks, that um, I usually base coat those with the black. Um, I think we have the vintage um, Christmas from last November. And I think if you look at that video, that little truck was probably um, base coated with black and then dry brushed with our red. Courtney will um, try to find it and add the um, link to it and then it'll take you right to it. But all our videos for the last year are saved on Facebook. Um, some, most of them are on YouTube, but not all of them because earlier this year we did have some recording issues so those um, she didn't actually upload to if the, if the audio is bad she didn't upload those to Facebook um, but we are working I think we announced it last week that we are doing pre-recorded videos um, so that when the boxes ship you guys will have access to those and she's still working on um, your access part of it um, but then you will not have to wait for the Thursday lives, although you're more than welcome to and still follow along, that would be great. But if you want to uh, paint your pieces right away or if you're having bad internet on Thursday night, you could always refer to those um, pre-recorded videos. And because it's not streaming live, it should be a much better um, quality video. Uh, like tonight, we had trouble connecting to Facebook. It didn't want to go live, so we had to switch um, phones and stuff until we could get connected. Um, Cordy says it looks like he's, well, the truck is painted red, really? Okay, so sometimes I do, and it should have been rust first. So, I'm sorry, Cordy's brought up the video for the, um, oh, so Cordy brought up the Christmas tr truck video, so she's looking at it, she looks like it's painted, um, but part of the video looks like she thinks it was cut off, so. But the tires are black, so that would mean that it... I think I did that truck actually two different ways. One was antiqued and one was dry brushed. Um, so there could be different... I mean, there's different ways of doing it. So like the truck, you could paint him, base coat it black, and then dry brush it the rust and then the red. Or you could paint it um, the red and then actually thin your paint like you do with the um, color wash and then antique it with... The black and then that actually kind of fills in the crevice too and it'll actually cover up a lot of 
Um, you don't have to be exact with your lines on there, and it, depending upon how much um, black antiquing you leave on there, you, it has a lot of room to cover up error. So there, there's that. There's always more than one way to do anything. Um, so that's actually two ways to do the truck. So I hope that hopefully that helps. Um, so Cordy says you can see the improvement of our videos. So yeah, so um, even back to the trucks again, like if I was doing like a light blue truck, I probably wouldn't base coat that one with black. I might go with a navy. Um, it it kind of depends what you want that under color in those crevices to be. And you can even um, just paint it out if you don't want all that dark shadowing in it and you just wanted a nice bright, um, like brand new paint paint look to it and not old and vintage looking you could just paint paint out those colors and highlight it a little bit with um like if you did medium blue you could highlight it with baby blue just a little bit um probably not too much so it kind of depends what you want your end result to be so hopefully that um helps a little bit let's see what else do we have here so D says awesome helps. Thanks a lot. Okay, and um, D, you can always message me if you have a truck or or anything um, with issues or if you have questions. Um, just send me a message and, and send a picture, and and I can usually help. Be pretty helpful and just message you back. Um, so hopefully that helps. But um, your base coat with your dry brushing can be different colors, so don't be afraid um, to not use not use black. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So, so I'm just building up my saddle brown on my little um, girl here while I'm talking. Um, we want to make sure we get the bottom. You always want to do your bottoms, um, especially if you're helping with the 4-H kids. The um, judges are definitely going to look at the bottoms if the bottoms are finished off. And if someone picks up your piece to look at it, you want it to look nice as well. I got a little bit of um, copper glitter going on here because we were we were recording our mummy um, for the pre. What are we calling it? <laughs> well, yeah, but what are we calling the videos? I forgot. I'm having a mind blank. Instead of the Thursday night lives, they're the pre oh pre recorded. We were doing the pre recorded videos today for our mummy, um, which we also had technical difficulties with, but. Um, um, kind of got that worked out with the vendor and they're actually sending us a new camera so <laughs> it wasn't us but it sure made for a long afternoon um, so the pre-record ones will have better better picture quality and whatnot so that you guys might find that really useful too so I need some more saddle brown here so I do have a <clears throat> excuse me a few speckles of copper glitter floating around from I'm um, putting the glitter on the mummy, uh, but that's okay. They'll either get covered up with paint or disappear. So I'm just getting my bottom with my black brown as well. I kind of like to do a, like a C stroke um, when there's such a smooth surface. And you can go either way with it. It kind of blends the paint um, down into that flat surface better. Um, when you have the texture, it just goes right on. But when you have that smooth surface, you kind of got to work it in there just a little bit more. And so we're going to look at him. So now I can see I have a lot more brown here and a little, there's some missing here and then here's some more. Um, so you don't want that. You want a nice even coat. So we're just going to go back and look at our um, little mama Pedgy here and get a nice even coat so that it's an even amount of brown and an even amount of black um, that's showing. So we'll just work our way around. So I do start in one area, work around. That way this area will dry and when I come back to it, it'll be ready to take up more paint. Um, now these guys were all the same color, so you can um, kind of work on all three at the same time. They're actually a um, quick little project. I'm actually a really good little beginner's project if you have someone that's um, just learning dry brushing because of all the texture that's on them. Um, so I'm just working my way around. We, um, you can all, always order more of these two. You can just uh, message us. Maybe you really like them and you want to make some more. And, and if we can fit them in your um, next box, then Courtney can add them to your invoice. 
and then we cover the shipping so we try to help cut the cost as much as we can on stuff like that so I do have the um, mummies painted or the monsters I should say not just the mummy and I think we only had two new colors right for the box um, only two new colors a bright blue and and grape um, so that was good. There are a lot of colors in the box, so if you've been a subscriber all along getting the colors, um, hopefully you have them all, and then there's only two new ones. I do try to reuse as many colors as possible always. Um, Courtney asked if the next box, which is our Scarecrow box, which I did share in the um, this box group, the Greenware. Um, I thought I did. I don't think there's any new colors. Um, in that scarecrow box, um, there could have been. Um, yeah, there could have been one. I'm not sure because I emailed you the list, but um, I because it's the garnet, um, the Lexington green, the leaf green, um, the lime burst. Because one is the blues and one is the greens and one is the garnets and then highlighted with the red. Then there was the yellow sunflower. So I'm just checking him over and I want to make sure that I have like a equal coverage of my black brown all over. Um, so I see it's kind of light right here. I can see a lot of black through there yet. So we're going to get a little more on here. So I'm probably have 90% of my hedgehog covered with the black brown and about 10% is left with the black in the crevices so that gives us our nice shading but we still want to have um, a nice e even coverage of our black brown and these guys do come in different colors so you could go look on the internet maybe you wanted them in the grays or grays or more of the tan so I mean you can do that too you can paint them any colors you want this was just the colors I kind of picked um, based on colors that were already in that we've already used so so there she is she's got a nice even black brown on her so you can see that went on really really quick because she's got so much texture and we'll get a little bit more on the bottom here We make sure she looks nice and pretty down there too and nice and even okay so now we can switch to one of our little girls so let me see if we have any questions going on nope looks like we're good yet so i'm just using my same brush because we have a it's a pretty good sized piece again we don't have and we don't have a lot of detail so we don't have to switch to a smaller brush but again, the little fur is going uh, from top to bottom, so we're going to kind of go sideways across it because it's kind of going sideways. Um, we want to let that um, black down in the crevices. I'm not brushing hard. I'm just drawing my brush back up and down across that texture, building it up on this, this area here, and then as we build that up, we'll just keep going further letting this dry and then we'll come back to it and add another layer till we get it all built up. I do like to use the three shades of color so I can show you we have we had our um, we have our black brown and then we're going to have our saddle brown and then we'll have our let's see we have medium brown on here uh, light brown grab the extra color when I threw them in there and then we'll go to our light brown you can see basic we have our dark light and light and medium shades of color um, you don't want to have all if you pick colors you wouldn't want to have them all the same shade even though they're different colors you want to have you want to have your color values different you want to have like a dark and a medium and a light so we have that um, so I need some more of our black brown And if you're not sure with your color values, you can look at your color wheel. And we can do that again quick tonight because the more the more we use that, the more um, comfortable you'll get with it. So, um, for instance, if I 
Well, we'll just take these three colors here. And we'll use, we'll take this one that'll show a, um, colors we're using. Um, so you want, we have a, um, let's change it out one more time. So you can see you can change your colors. So that could be dark, medium, and light. Um, this could be dark, medium, and light. Um, but these are the colors we used. So on the, on the back side, well, I guess it's the front side of your color wheel, there is a gray scale. Um, half of it's on this side and half of it's on the other side. Um, you're not going to look, be looking at the colored part of your wheel. You're going to look at the center wheel. And you're going to compare your dark. So you want a dark one and you want a medium one and then you want a light one. Um, so you would look at your first color that you picked and you can see that it's over here in this dark area, probably around this two and a half value. So that would give us our dark. Um, if you if you compared the black, even though the black is our, our base coat, it's just our base coat. So you wouldn't want to really include the black as you, as one of your dark colors because it's very close to the um, dark brown, the black brown. So you're comparing it to the value of the gray color. So if I were to take my black brown and put it over here by this value of say nine, it doesn't compare to that color value. Not, not that it doesn't, it doesn't go with the gray at all. We're looking at the, how dark or light the gray is on the color wheel. So we can see that this is a darker than this value, than this value of gray. But if we spin our wheel, we can see that it's, it's getting closer and closer. Um, actually, it goes really good here with the, the three. So that is our darkest color because we've eliminated black because black is really close as well, but it's just our base coat color. So now our next color, we wouldn't want in that same color range. We would want in our medium color range, which is more in the middle here. So then we take our um, saddle brown and we can see that it's lighter than the value of three that the um, black brown is. So if we kind of take it along and we can come over here and we can see that it, well, it's darker than these values of gray, um, but it's more over here, maybe about the six or even the five, kind of in the middle as far as comparing it to the color of gray of how bright or how dark it is. So I would say it's about our six. Um, so that gives us our dark color and our medium color. So now we have our light color, which is our rosy tan. And if we put it on the color wheel, we can see that it's a lot darker value. It's the black is a darker value than our um, rosy tan. So it really doesn't go with that as far as comparing it to it. So it wouldn't be considered a dark color. And we, we actually want a light color. So I'm coming around my color wheel and it, it's still light, lighter than our saddle brown, which we had at a six. But if I keep coming, it's more like our value of nine. Um, 10 is white and it's not white, but it, it compares more to the value of nine or even eight here. So we have a dark, a medium and a light color. And you do want, um, I like to do the three shades of color because it just gives you your piece a lot of um, shape to it that way. Um, so let's see. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to compare some equal colors. So say I had these three colors picked out. Um, so I have, I have my black brown, which again is going to match up with my dark value on my color wheel. Um, then say I had this medium brown picked out so that it's darker than my saddle, my black brown, and I can bring it around here. In five, it's close to it's close to the value of five or even six. Um, probably comparable to six. So that could be my medium color, but then if I went with my rosy tan again, the rosy tan is fairly comparable. It's really close to the color value of my medium brown. So I wouldn't want that because they're, they're too close to each other and they would get lost in each other. So you want something that's a totally different um, shade like our, um, where'd it go, my rosy? I moved it now. <laughs> so actually the medium brown I don't want. So this 
we wouldn't want to do like the medium brown with the saddle brown and the rosy tan because this medium brown is, is too close of a color um, to the our rosy tan. But if I take that out of the picture and put my saddle brown in there, you can see that there's a distinct difference. I have dark, I have medium, and I have light. So when I have my medium brown back in there, I have dark and I have kind of medium again. So that, that's, not, that's not a good color choice because you want, you kind of want three different shades of color. So hopefully that helps explain that again this week. And then using your grayscale on your color wheel, um, the, the gray part of the, your inner wheel. So you kind of want your dark, your light, and then a medium. And you're just comparing the shade or the light or the darkness of the color to the color wheel um, to help you get that choice of colors. So we'll try to do that every now and then so you guys can um, maybe help understand the, the color choices and, and how to pick those so that they're not all the same value of color. You want different values of color. Otherwise, your piece is going to be kind of boring and not have a lot of life to it because they're all the same color value. Even though they're different colors, they, they can still be boring. Like these two colors would just be boring together. Where would I go with it? So if I just had those two colors, even though they're two different bottles of paint in two different colors, they're so close to each other that they would get lost. There's no separation. So Courtney's got a question. So Courtney, what if you just want a dark color like a dark blue, such as, um, um, I guess, Talisa, tell us more, uh, what would you do with the dark blue? You, you just want your entire piece to be dark? I mean, if you're doing a cup and you wanted it just to be dark blue, I mean, that's fine. Um, you can use single colors at times. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it just depends upon your what you're doing. Like a plate, may, you may be doing a bowl and it, it's just going to be dark blue. That That's fine. Um, I guess this is more for shading with animals and people and um, scene type things, but things that can be one color um, can certainly be one color. Um, so like um, Courtney's giving me our little gnome, like like he could be all navy navy blue and not have the light blue on, on there, but it wouldn't have as much life to it. It would just be kind of plain and just navy blue, but you, you could do that. So you can. Um, I, I just tend to use um, three colors when I when I want to shade something. So she goes, on my elves, I wanted to paint one in navy, one in medium, and one in light. Okay, so I, I would still use three colors, but lighter shades of those colors. So um, we can go with, let's see, we got, even if you wanted one in navy, um, I would probably do like my black brown because as my base coating because you have a lot of skin color then the one that you wanted navy which I would then dry brush navy but I would highlight it um, where the highlights would be with just a little bit of the of the medium blue you don't have to use a lot but you do want a little bit because you don't want it just navy because the navy is actually very um, close in color value to your black brown and it's kind of be a little bit boring, but if you add just a touch of um, navy to highlight your areas, it's going to be add a lot of color to it. Um, so then if we take, um, then you want your next one to say be medium blue. Again, I would still um, base coat them all in um, the black brown. And I would probably go with my navy again on the whole, whole thing. And then for the medium blue, I would come and do a lot more Instead of just highlighting your elf with, with the medium blue, I would do probably like three quarters of him with the, with the medium blue. And then you could highlight him like you did the navy one, but with, with the baby blue. And then for your light one, I would actually um, do the same thing, put all my navy on it, do my uh, medium blue on it, again about three quarters of it. You have about a quarter with your navy, and then come back with the baby blue and do probably two thirds of it with my baby blue, and then I would highlight with a white. So you're going to have, even though you have these colors underneath there, you're not going to have a, a ton 
because each time you're going to cover up more with your lighter colors. So you would have a lot of baby blue on that last one with a little bit of um, white highlight, but you would still have the graduation of color um, to get to that. So hopefully that helps. Well, because you're stuck on them, okay. Um, if you want to send me a picture of them, um, I could. That would probably I could probably help you better. Um, but even though you want them all in blue, I would still um, do the black brown, do the navy on all of them. And then highlight that first one with a little bit of the medium blue. And then your next one, do a lot more of the medium blue on it and highlight it with the baby blue. And then your last one, um, do a lot. Just keep building up your colors until you have all the, all the colors and then highlighting with the white. But yep, just send a picture and we'll um, see what we can do to help. But I think that'll um, help you. So, okay. So we have a question, what brush am I using? I'm using my size 8 um, four bristle round brush. You could use a flat or a round. Um, I'm, I'm using the size 8 because it's a bigger piece without a lot of detail. Um, and this brush will be in the September box if you're a subscriber or if you buy a single purchase. Um, but you could use the flat one that came as well. Um, it's just that that one was all pretty and white, so I just I grabbed one that's all dirty already, so it's been used before. So we had our started on our little guy here, and we're just going to keep going. Um, again, I'm going to do about 90% of it covered with my black brown, leaving about 10% of the black down in the crevices, and we'll do one side, and then as we work to the other side. Um, that other side will dry. So these, these guys just go up, go really quick. They're just really quick little fellows to dry brush. So this would be a good project for kids to learn on or anyone um, dry brushing for the first time. Um, if you have access to a shop, they're cute um, airbrush also. So that's another way to do them. Um, so Cordy asks, when you airbrush, do you use the same paints? You can use the acrylics or you can use the, um, like the easy strokes. It's an underglaze. It's a concentrated underglaze. Um, you do want to look, you probably don't want to use um, like the Duncan Concepts because they have frit, which is glass in them, and you don't want to be spraying that. Um, so you want to use more of an underglaze or a... Um, concentrated underglaze that can be thinned. Um, so Cordy asked if we're going to set up the airbrush station at the, at the classroom. Yep, we're going to do that. Um, I actually have two, so I can keep one at home and um, set one up there. So I'm just dry brushing across, across my texture on his little back here. Just I mean, I, and I'm not brushing, bearing down really hard. I'm just lightly brushing over the top, top all the way down to the bottom. So we'll get his whole little back done here. And then we'll just work our way right around to the front. A little piece of white there. So just brushing again, just going kind of around because that's kind of how his little texture is here and you want to do the bottoms bottoms are always good to do so we'll try to throw in that color wheel every now and then because that'll help you guys learn um, how to use it especially if you're having trouble picking colors and shades and values and um, it's just that when something is all the same value all the all the colors are the same value whether they're light or dark um, your piece can be boring, so you want you want to have that light and medium, or um, dark and medium, or light, medium, and dark. You just need a little bit of variation, um, so your piece kind of comes to life. And you you can do that by comparing your colors on that gray scale. Even though um, it's just gray, it still helps you with the value of the color. So let's see what else we got going on. I'm just. Um, dry brushing back and forth on his little face here. Um, try to go across 
like the lines in his mouth so you kind of have to turn your brush a little bit if I would go with it it would fill it in with the uh, black brown and we'd lose our black um, coloring or shading that's in there that we're using our black for I'm kind of doing like a little that little C stroke that I kind of tend to like because it just uh, blends the color right down into the surface there because he does have a lot of um, texture on his face, but I actually want his face to be um, fairly light colored. And we should have time that we'll be able to do one with the darker face too. So we'll um, do that too. Because these guys come in all kinds of shades of browns and grays and cream colors and almost white. So it's kind of personal preference of what, what color you want to make yours. So you just want this black brown to be nice and even. You don't want like a lot of black brown here and then not much over here and a lot here. You want it just a nice even um, coat of the black brown on the whole thing. So we're looking pretty good. We got the bottom. And then we'll look at the back here again. So I do have my black brown right across the top here, but I have a little more black showing yet than I would like, so I'm just going to get a little bit more just so it's down in the crevices there and not all the way up to the top. And again, I'm just always changing my brush to go across that texture so it um, preserves that black that is down in the crevices. And we can set him aside and we'll get some more black brown. And now I got my paint all stirred up here. We'll just get a little more. And again, just touch that brush on the edge and brush it out. And let's see, do we have anything more? Nope, we're good. Again, we're going to um, do the same thing with this little guy. Just rub back and forth across your texture. So my all my little black lines are going east to west or left to right but I want to go north and south or up and down across them. If I go this way, it's going to fill it in and all that black will be gone. So you want to go across it whenever you're doing your dry brushing. And, and you do have to change. Like here it's completely up and down. Here it's more of a curve. So you just kind of got to work your brush with, with the texture. So just grab a little, brush it out, brush back and forth across your texture. Come right onto your bottom and always do your bottoms. Again, the bottom is smooth, so I'm kind of doing that little C stroke to kind of rub it in. Just goes into the paint a little bit better than going directly back and forth. And it's just a little, like a, the letter C, if you are writing the letter C, and you can go either way. And then we'll come back up to our side because that kind of dried. And grab a little more and brush it out and I just turn him and we'll just keep working our way around. That way the previous area can dry. Um, it does take more than one coat to build up your dry brush color. You want to do several thin layers versus one big heavy layer because then it's more of a wet brushing. Um, if you go with the several small layers you can get more shading with your um, colors. We're just going to work our way around here. You can see these guys go really, really quick. They're little fun, fun things to do. So just brushing it on and just keep going around. Not brushing hard. Just grab a little, brush it out. Come right to the bottom. Work right up to the top. So our, our next box has the monsters. They have a lot more detail. They, they won't paint up as fast as these guys, but they're still a lot of fun. Um, we do have the extra witch, the little girl witch, and then the Mr. and Mrs. Frankenstein. If you weren't a subscriber last year, you can just message us and we can add those um, to your invoice as well. I should have plenty of them poured. Um, I do need to get them cleaned yet, but that'll be this week's um, game plan. So I kind of worked my way right around to where we started. And now we have his little face to do. Um, so we have a question if we can put these outside. 
Um, they can go outside if they're sealed. And you would also want to seal the inside. You could pour um, that Johnson's floor wax in the inside and then dump it back out. Or you can get the Thompson's water sealer for like the um, concrete and um, tile and pour it in there and then dump it back out and let it dry. If you're in a freeze thaw area, you would want to bring them in for the winter. Um, ceramics don't do well outside um, when it's freezing thawing. They tend to um, want to crack even if they are sealed, even with the um, glazes. It's just better to bring them in, but you, you can put them out. And then you would want to re reseal them every, every other year, um, depending upon where you're at. I mean, if like you're like in Arizona where it's 100 and some degrees, you might have to do it every year because you have a longer um, hot summer season. Um, where I'm at, it's only summer from like the end of May through um, the end of August. So then the stuff comes in for the winter. So our um, season is shorter so I can get away with every other year. But if you're in a longer season, you might want to seal them every year, once a year. Um, including the outsides with your spray sealer. So we're just um, working our black brown on here and making him a nice even coat. So he doesn't have black here and brown there and just a nice even coat of our black brown. So we'll just kind of do him one more time. So I'll go back to the side here where I started and just brush light again, um, leaving probably like 10% of my black down in those crevices because that's what's given our um, shading to our piece. And when you have shading, it um, gives your piece more dimension and shape and um, just gives them more life when you have the shades of colors. Let's see, any other questions do we got going on? So, looks like we're pretty good right now. If you have a question, just type it in and we'll get it answered. So let's see, we have, I have most of the bisque um, clean for the September box. I brought brought it to Courtney's today and she'll get it bubble wrapped, cleaned and bubble wrapped and inspected. Mm -hmm. She has to pass her inspection as well as mine so they get double inspected. Um, I'll be working on cleaning all the extra bisque that you guys are ordering so we get that in your boxes. In That'll be um, this week. And I, in the BIS box group, we, I did post the greenware pictures of the um, next box, which is the scarecrow and the pumpkin. It's the new scarecrow stack that's 10 and a half inches tall and then a pumpkin to go with it. And then our November box, which is the last year's um, Christmas gnomes. And then there's two of those and then two little Christmas packages to go with them. And they're actually pretty good size. Um, they're not small, so they're um, they're gangbusters, but they're bigger gangbuster molds, so they're um, really nice. Um, once those guys are dried, I'll be able to get them painted so you, we can get the pictures posted, and Courtney can get the pre-orders up in case you're just doing a one-time purchase. What? Doing lighting what up? I don't know what you mean. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so Cordy wants the Christmas gnomes to have the star cutouts in their hats. And then we will include a um, the tea lights to go with them. So I now will be pouring them with stars cut out in them. So you guys should like that. Um, one has a Christmas tree and I think one has presents. So that'll, um, that'll be cute. So we got our little Nomi, he's all looking nice and even colored. We have our black down in our crevices. There's about 10% of the black showing. The other 90% is covered with our black brown. So that's our first layer of our shading. So we will set him aside because now the, um, the bigger one has dried and we can move on to the bigger one. Um, so for the bigger one, we're gonna start with OS489, our saddle brown. Um, that's OS489 Saddle Brown. I think that was a new color for this box, right? Or not? No? Well, we used it from a long time ago. Yep. So it's kind of a chestnutty color. Um, so I'm going to go with my same dirty brush that still has brown in it because we're still in the brown family. 
I'm just going to touch the edge of my brush with my um, saddle brown, brush it out on my paper towel, kind of get it built up in there. And now you can see I have this a lot of paint, but now when I brush, there's just a little bit of paint, and that's going to go onto our piece. Um, so we will just start from one side, and we'll just, you can see that that goes on there really quick and easy. And we'll just start around the face here, just like we did before, and work our way around. Um, so I am going to leave maybe like 5 or 10% of the saddle brown. We're leaving that black that's still in the crevices. So we have that nice um, gradual color shading going on. Courtney says we've got a question. Um, oh, so Jean wants to know um, what the sealer was. You can purchase Johnson's liquid um, floor wax. It comes like in a pint-sized bottle and that will um, seal the inside of your ceramic pieces also. You just um, pour it in there, um, swirl it around so the whole inside is um, covered and then just dump it back out. And you can um, just keep reusing your bottle to seal your outside things. Otherwise, the, um, the Thompson's water sealer works great too. I know I had someone that had trouble finding the Johnson's floor wax, liquid floor wax, but the... Um, the Thompson's water sealer works great and it's non-yellowing. I mean you want to use something that's non-yellowing even though it's on the inside, but um, that works really well. So I'm just working my saddle brown here over the top of my black brown and my black, leaving some of both of those original colors exposed yet. And I'm just keep going. I let this area dry while I keep going so that when I come back around, it'll be dry and it'll take more paint. Let's see what else we got going on. Um, we're getting the keys to our shop on September 8th, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we have to paint because it's kind of a celery green. And I'm not really a green girl. I'm more of a blues and grays and that kind of a color. Green's not really my thing, especially um, a bright limey green. So that should be fun. And then we'll get our paints and brushes and supplies and bisque out there. So you guys will probably have see pictures of that going on. Um, chairs and tables and all that good stuff. Today I did buy a sign from Hobby Lobby. It says welcome to the farmhouse because it is a farmhouse so kind of with the galvanized um, metal. Looks farmhouse-y so that's kind of the decorating way we were going to go. Courtney talked about that before already. So You can see I'm just dry brushing my saddle brown on here just building that color up. Trying to get it nice and even. Um, Courtney says, what else have I found? Oh, I found these little, um, like, towel hangers that have windmill, the center of the windmill on them, and then they have a hanger on the bottom. So I think those can go in the bathroom or wherever the towels are going to hang. Could use them to hang the aprons on, yep. Um, they were pretty cute because I like windmills too, and they were kind of that rusty metal, um, silver metal. Um, Cordy asked if I looked at the fall colors. Um, yep, I kind of did. The pumpkins. There's actually a variety of colors. Anything from like a sea green pumpkins and peach colored pumpkins to metallic pumpkins um, to the jewel tones pumpkins. So there's a, um, it was kind of all over the place. Um, Christmas, I did notice that there was pinks and grays. A display with pinks and grays. Um, or pinks and kind of silver grays. Um, but then there was another one with um, kind of the jewel tones, a really deep navy and a really deep purple, but then kind of a fluorescent pink. So I don't know where that, that came in on the, on the jewel tone colors. But And I did take a picture um, just for reference. Then I noticed there was a lot of the black and red um, buffalo plaid 
and a lot of the black and white plaid in the Christmas aisles. Um, but um, thank, the fall stuff, as far as the pumpkins, was really all over the color spectrum. This from the like the sea green and peach down to the jewel tones, like a really deep burgundy, really deep purple. Um, I looked because we're ordering um, paints, and I was wondering what what colors to get for um, some fall pumpkins to do besides um, the traditional um, pumpkin color of orange. Um, there were some striped ones. There were some black and white checked ones. They're, they're just kind of all over the place. L lots of colors. <laughs> um, it's kind of different. Do you ask how are the koi? Koi or huh? Oh, the turquoise. Yeah, it was kind of a, um, they kind of had a light, light. Yeah, more pastel -y. yeah, like the trucks, there was trucks that were pastel -y, light turquoise. So we worked our way around, and now we want to make sure we get our bottom here. Um, what else did I got? I got a few Christmas, um, little decorations. I got these cute little, look like they're like laser cut. Um, snowflakes are maybe an inch and a half at the most. Um, they're kind of just little thin balsa wood. Um, they're coming in a little kit, like there was like 50 of them in this little package, and they were 40% off, but I thought they might be cute. Um, painted with, and then put cover them with glitter and maybe put them on a Christmas tree or on the, um, the old trucks. And I bought all the packages that they had. So Courtney went and grabbed them, but here they are. They're just... There's so much detail in each one, um, and there are 54 snowflakes, an inch and 0.34, which is an inch and a third by an inch and a third. Um, they were 4.99, and then they were 40% off. But I mean, the detail is really, really good. But I can see those painted up with blue, and then put some silver glitter on, or white, and put silver glitter on, and then maybe put them on the truck doors or on the um, grills of the trucks. I think they'd be pretty cute, or even hang on Christmas trees, mm -hmm. um, painted up. I mean, I, I wouldn't leave them with the wood color, but I, I would paint them and put glitter and stuff on them. So I thought those were pretty cool. I got all eight packages of those. Um, and the thing is, they usually don't restock those too much. That stuff, once you see what, what there is, um, it's gone, it's gone. So that's why I got all of them, because the, by the time I figure out exactly what I'm going to do with them, they might all be gone. So I just thought, well, they just seem really, really... They're cute because they're so fine. So, oh, it's just a little like a little balsa wood thing. So, so I, they just seem like they would be really versatile for something. <laughs> I thought Christmas trees in the trucks was my thing. So I mean, you could put them on packages, tie them on with little bows, strings, little silver um, string on bows. On, on little um, Christmas ornaments, any little thing. They just were cute little stuff. So, yep, they they had those at Hobby Lobby. So, um, the one in Appleton has no more. <laughs> They're gone, so don't go there. And I got them all, unless they restock. But the Christmas, um, actually that 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 center aisle with those Christmas things was kind of cleaned out already. There was a lot of empty, yeah. So it's kind of late because they get that stuff ready in July and people start buying it and. If you don't get it, it's gone when you want it. But, huh? I didn't get to look at the clearance, but those would even be cute on the little gnomes on their hats. So, I mean, I just think there's a ton of things you could do with those little snowflakes. So, we'll have to see what you guys do with them. If you go get them, post us some pictures. So I'm just getting my saddle brown on my bottom, because again, I want to keep that going right along with his top, so he looks nice and um, even and looks good if someone picks him up to look at the bottom. You always want everything to look complete and finished. And I'm just grabbing my saddle brown and brushing away here. Not brushing hard, I'm just brushing kind of medium. Kind of doing those little C strokes. And then I got, um, also bought some Christmas ribbon because sometimes by the time Christmas gets here you can't find that stuff when you need it. Um, what else did I? I had a whole bag full of stuff. <laughs> well, there wasn't much in it and it added up quick. So, 
Oh, and I got um, the copper glitter for our um, mummy to put on his little um, pockets. That's probably what added up quick. So we need a little more of our saddle brown. Please put the item number up so we can order them online. Oh, Mary Paulson, you are smart. We might have to do that and get some more. Courtney has grabbed the package. She will let you know. I don't know if that seasonal stuff can be ordered online, though. It's with the Christmas crafts in the um, center aisles. Um, in case you can't order it online. Um, they didn't have other wood stuff, but it's worth all the ribbon, all the Christmas ribbon, and um, like that little paint by numbers stuff that's usually in the center aisles there um, at Christmas time. But like a lot of that stuff was already cleaned out with like the jingle bells and um, all, all of that kind of stuff, the paint by numbers stuff, the ribbon, the... Um, Oh, Courtney says we're online. Order up, you guys. <laughs> and they're on sale for $3. So, you, I mean, and there's 54 pieces in there. So, I just think they'd be cute on the front of those pickup trucks. And it wouldn't be too Christmassy. Oh, and she says free shipping if you spend $50. So, there you go. Um, they're just really, they're just really neat. I just, like, really like them when I've seen them. So, I'm just doing his little face now. Just kind of doing that little C stroke and kind of blending it down in there because I don't want a whole lot of black left on his face. Like he kind of has that lighter um, face look to him. We will. I'll do another one next week and we'll do the um, darker face. So if you want to have a darker face, you'll see how to um, do the darker face. We'll just leave it darker. Hmm? We'll run out of time. We're not going to finish them. Yeah, because we'll, um, the boxes, we're just going out next week, so we'll need another. So, I'm just looking at him and making sure my saddle brown here is nice and even. And not splotchy and patchy. And so I'm looking at him from the front, and I can see he's not real even here. It's more um, black on one side than the other side. And I'm actually going to stick my hand in him so I can kind of rotate him around. And just brush, just brush till you get him the shade that you want him. Her, I should say. We call her the mama. And come back to my top. Well, let's see what else. That was about the only excitement. I haven't been to a store in a long, long time. It was kind of um, fun to stop in and see the Christmas stuff. Oh, lots of gingerbread houses. I was surprised at that. Um, and we do have a gingerbread house mold. We might have two of them even that are cookie jars. Um, and then a lot of the, they had a lot of the ceramic Christmas trees again. But besides the white, or besides the green ones, they, which are kind of ugly actually. Um, they had a lot of white ones with the colored lights, just plain old white with colored lights, and those those are pretty. So lots of truck stuff again. Um, oh, vin very vintage, like really really vintage reindeer. Like mm. they had to be from the 20s, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, yeah, and and snowmen too. <laughs> and we came across vintage snowmen molds that we didn't we didn't get because they were like they're like way vintage like. 40s and 30s and like very very vintage I was really surprised um, to see them like the little deer have the really pointy nose and they were kind of green painted green even like yeah <laughs> very vintage um, and the snowman had little straight um, single line for the eyes very very vintage looking too really surprised at that so they were kind of by with the campers and the vintage campers and stuff so maybe that's why they did that I don't know but they're definitely um, vintage um, Christmassy stuff as far as the snowmen and the reindeer like like the ugly vintage not cute vintage <laughs> huh? the buyer had an off day yeah when when they bought those snowmen and those 
reindeer, they definitely had an off day because they're very, very vintage. Like, huh? I don't know if it's even a nostalgia for your grandma. That's how vintage they are. <laughs> Honestly. So, but I guess everything comes back around, right? Alrighty, so we're looking this little guy over and he's looking pretty even everywhere. We've got our saddle brown on there. We've got our black brown showing through and our black. And now we can go to one of our little, little ones. And how are we doing on time? 11 after, okay. I don't think we have any show and tell for tonight though, huh? I mean, I have the bisque, um, there's some bisque star guy gnomies and pumpkin gnomies if they wanted to see those in bisque instead of the greenware. I did bring Courtney a miscellaneous box of um, bisque today. It has the witchy poo, sweet brew, and smell my feet, and that tall, skinny, um, snowman crawling up the tree so she can get those uh, packaged and and then weigh them to get the shipping figured out if you're buying them separate from your box or to see if they will actually fit in the box and you could still get um, your box pieces with them um, the witches are pretty good good size I'm not sure if she'll be able to get a lot of um, I'm not sure if they're gonna fit in the bisque box but she's gonna give it a try because I know a few of you wanted those um, but she does have those now to wrap them and see what she can all squeeze into a box. Um, so Courtney's looking at the um, the pumpkin gnome guy and brushing him off. And um, she says he's bigger than she thought they were going to be. So that's good. They're pretty good size because there's only two in the mold. Um, well, those are the ornament size ones. That's why. No, because the ornament size is small. So... We're just doing our saddle brown on our little stand-up guy here, and we're going to do our bottom. Um, hats have a little bit of different texture on them, yep. And then, like, the um, things, or the pumpkin ones have more of a, a little top of the hat. It's got a little different curl to it, too. Yeah. Um, she's getting them ready so we can show you guys before we're done here tonight. Because I, I just grab them out of the kill, and then... Um, she notices a little error here or there or whatever, so she's just brushing them off. I'm not sure what else was in there in that disc box for you to show them. I don't know. There's a whole, a whole bunch of truck lids. So we do have all the truck lids, and I think she's got all those listed now with our What's New Wednesday. She had a um, big, um, big What's New Wednesday with all this um, stuff. Um, I haven't poured the Yeti molds yet because those are they're just way too wet. When I um, poured the, even pouring the Christmas gnomes for that box, um, they did not want to come out of the molds. They're just too wet, so they have to sit here for a while yet. Um, as soon as they're dry, we'll get the um, Yetis pulled or poured. We have all the Mama, the Papa, and the, um, I think there's a Gangbuster one, but we do have all those and the one, and the truck insert ones. I'm just waiting for all that stuff to dry, though. Oh, this is a cute little piece. I'll show you that one too. It's, I don't know, I call it the cemetery roll. It's got the, um, it's got two skulls on it and a tombstone and a pumpkin and a cat. Um, he's really popular. It's a Lakeman mold, Lakeland mold. Um, I think it's from one of our first res mold rescues. I think it's from my red granite one actually where they were going to the dump on Monday and I was there on Friday. I got lost, you know. So we're just getting our saddle brown built up on our little guy here, and then we'll do the other one, and then we can show you our little extra bisque pieces that we got. And I think Courtney has, well, the um, gnomes, she'll have to add those to the website yet, but um, the scarecrow guy, or the um, tombstone cemetery guy, that that's on the site, it's a popular seller. But he'd actually be kind of, it's not, it's, you took it off because it was sold out. Oh, I thought he was on there. Oh, I thought he was on there because he sold out a couple times. You sure? Oh, so, um, so she'll have to get that created and on there and, um, I did pour a couple other ones today. One was a, 
um, scarecrow row and one was a tombstone row. Those were kind of cute. Or no, not tombstone row. It's the scarecrow one has the scarecrow and crows. And what did the other one have? It was the tombstones. It's written it on the tombstone. kind of tombstones um, with pumpkins. A lot of texture. Um, a lot of texture. And, there, and then there was another one and it was a um, pumpkin row. Um, and that could actually have like the um, tea light in it and it would probably go really good with our monsters. So I'll get that, um, as soon as it's dry, I'll get that poured and get it to Courtney too because it you might want to add that to your box, but it's a little bit bigger piece too as far as long. But I think it would be cute with the, just the plain pumpkins. I think three of them are jack-o'-lanterns and three of them are regular pumpkins, but it's kind of like a pumpkin roll. And they're kind of a nice size to go with the monsters and then they could light up with the tea light. Yeah, so I gotta get those back on the shelves. And then I pulled, um, it was called Ten Little Pumpkins. They're kind of the size that um, the Frankens, the vampire is holding, and then the other little guy. Um, and they're just ten little plain pumpkins, so they would be cute sitting with your monsters too. Um, so I've been pouring those and I have to get those cleaned and fired so when we ship they're ready to ready to go. Um, um, so Cordy is behind on messages from yesterday and um, was Jason's birthday so she spent some time with him but she'll get caught up with so if you're waiting um, for messages or comments on posts just give us a couple days here and we'll um, she'll get caught up maybe um, for sure by Monday right because you're taking Saturday off too. Um, so probably um, by Monday, so even if you've commented on something, just give her till Monday um, to get back with you. We have to get our glazer order in, so we do need to take care of that. So I got my little stand-up guy all done, and his little bottom is done. And we'll move on to our little lying-down guy. And we'll probably even um, finish these guys next week, and then we can... Um, I think we'll need one more week, right? Then we'll do the... So then the boxes go out, so then we'll do the extra one with the, what? Um, well, I don't know, Cordy asked if we could do the witch in one show, I don't know. She's got a lot of detail. I don't know what you mean. Oh, so Cordy's thinking we could um, do her if I have her in different stages and kind of move it along quicker. Um, we could probably try to do that. Right, we could get them started on her. Um, so we have the little girl witch if you wanted to add her to your box. Um, and I think we're, we're going to be done with these guys before you guys get your next box. So we will try to fit um, painting of her in. Kind of a little extra, I guess. Um, we were going to do the extra instructions as part of birthday. Courtney's birthday is in September, so I was going to do a technique sheet on her anyway for everyone um, that's buying her. So um, we'll probably be able to do both, do the technique sheet for Courtney's birthday in September, and then we'll um, get her painted while you guys are waiting for your boxes to ship. Um, that should work out okay, because you can always refer back to the video even though you won't have her in your possession probably, um, but that'll work. And she's going to be in purple because that's Courtney's favorite color, and black and purple is kind of our Halloween colors too, so that should work. Black, black, silver, and purple, that sounds good. Um, so that'll be a um, kind of a big extra for you guys then that we're going to throw in here as long as we're talking here tonight. <laughs> so look forward to us doing a little extra on the witch, the little girl witch. So if you still want to have her added to your box, send us a message and um, Courtney will add her to your invoice when the invoices go out, which they go out when? Which is Tuesday maybe? Wednesday? Yeah. It's before next Thursday. Monday? Monday? I don't know, you should probably look so we can talk about that because it's uh, Memorial or Labor Day weekend. Oh. Hmm? Yeah, it's next weekend, but they have to go out before that. They go out the first. The invoices are going out the first, so when's the first? 
Tuesday. So look for your invoices on Tuesday. Um, but if you want something added to your um, invoice, give us a message before Tuesday because then Courtney can add it to your invoice before it goes out. And now we are going to do a class, a one night class on our witch, which I will, huh? Yeah. Um, so I will have her um, base coded ahead of time so it will be a little bit faster pace um, class, but then when you get your box, you can refer back to it, the back, refer back to the video, but we'll also have um, a technique sheet online that you can just download. Um, so if you do want that witch, just give us, send us a messenger message and Courtney will get it in your box because I do have plenty poured, so it's just a matter of getting them clean. And then if you need Mr. and Mrs. Frankie, let us know that too because we have those guys poured. Um, they just need cleaning yet. And um, those videos for Mr. and Mrs. Frankie are still up from last year, so you can still refer back um, to those. Cordy says when we had a terrible camera. And did we do um, technique sheets, or are we going to do techniques? We are going to do technique sheets that you can um, access on our Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bist.com um, resource tab. So you'll have free access to those too. Um, so if you had a box last year, you can still print it if you wanted to do some more or add, add more. So you can add Mr. and Mrs. Frankie. Um, you can add the witch. You can add any bisque or any paint supplies that we carry to your box um, by messaging us. Courtney will add it to your invoice. The invoices will go out the first. Um, then we are going to try to ship on Friday the 4th because Memorial or Labor Day is on Monday and the post office will be closed. Um, so if you can pay your invoices sooner than later, that would um, help us to get your box in the mail um, sooner. Otherwise, they're, they won't go out until um, Tuesday the 8th, which is after Labor Day because of the mail. Um, so if you can pay for your boxes so we can ship them on Friday and Saturday, that would, um, instead of waiting till the last minute, that would be a help to get your box to you quicker. Um, so we got our little guy here all base coated in saddle brown. We got all three of them in saddle brown, so we're kind of at a good stopping point. Um, so here's the mama and the other little brother or sister, whatever you want to do, call him. And this is what we're going to go to. So we'll get them to that point, and we should be able to do one with the dark eye, or actually the dark face. I can actually do one anyway. One with the dark face and one with the light face, and then that would help that. And then the following time we can do the witch. Yeah, you don't have to paint another one. I think that'll work. Um, and then Cordy brought a few things for me to show you guys. Um, so these guys could be added to your box too, right? They can add these too. Um, they're not. Um, I just brought these to Cordy now, so she didn't have pictures before now. Um, but this is the two gnomes, and you could add those to your box too just by messaging Courtney, um, well, not by messaging us, and she'll get the prices and stuff checked because, like I said, I just brought them today. So um, she said this set is $18, but I do have, yep, they're bigger than what you think. Like the, he's, a, he's a handful. Um, they're really cute. Um, so they could go in your box as well. All depends how much extra stuff you're getting. Um, and then we also have the star gnomes. Um, these were, um, one is, um, so we have one, this is the ornament size one. And I can put the ho two holes to put a, like a silver cord you could hang it with or the red cord, but I can also put the U hooks in them or we can put no hooks in it. Um, a lot of, Courtney says we, a lot of people have them ordered as shelf sitters. Um, and they're six dollars each both of them so these are six dollars each so we have one with the star on the left and one with the star on the right the um the one with the star on the right is a little bit bigger um they're really cute too so he they can sit or they can hang um this one gets the hanger right here here um it'll be the the metal hanger so you could just hang it with a i like to use um instead of the ornament hooks i like like the silver or the red um, Christmas twine, or even like the, um, it's just twine, it's the brown, more rustic twine. So that's these guys. 
And you can add those to your box if you want. You can just message us, uh, us for that. Now I was thinking these would be good even for the 4th of July with the star because you could do them in red, white, and blue. And I wanted to do that, but I, haven't, I don't have time much time to paint. But I think they would be good um, 4th of July ones too. Um, and of course the Christmas ones too. So that's those guys. Um, and she's just getting them today. That's why they didn't make it to the What's New Wednesday. And then our other little cute thing that's been really popular is our Lakeland mold. And it's, I don't know, I call it like tombstone row or the cemetery row, but it's got the um, skulls on each end, um, the pumpkin, it's got a, a mouse's tail, well no, that might just be the vine, it's got the tombstone and then the cat, and now I did have a lady request that the eyes be cut out on the cat, so I think when that's, it takes a clip light, that's going to be kind of cool, that the cat's eyes are going to light up too. And then I do have a couple that I put um, pinhole lights in on the tombstone, so that would light up too. Um, but this might be kind of cute with the monsters too. So, yeah, Cordy says maybe a purple light or a green light in there. Um, and I do have a few of these in bisque already, so um, they could possibly fit in the box too, right? It's probably yeah. 10 inches long, four and a half inches tall. So she thinks if you're not getting anything else, um, this would probably fit in in the box with your um, monsters. So that's kind of the new stuff I brought her today, along with um, the witches, but those are boxed up yet. So um, I think that's about it for us for this week. Cordy says she has to find the price for the lake, the Lakeland for the cemetery row guy, and she'll um, let you guys know that and get pictures. You can put pictures right on the this box group. Um, I think that's about it. We're going to finish these guys up next week already. Again, your invoices will go out the first. Try to pay for them. Um, sooner, sooner than later is better so we can beat the Labor Day mail. Um, we do have a few of these boxes left yet. Or no, we have these too, right? And then we also have the Franken, the mummies, our Monster Mania, which is your September box, which is what the invoice will be for on the 1st, on Tuesday. So it's these four pieces in bisque. And then you have the um, Frankensteins too, and the witch. So the witch I didn't get, did not get painted yet, but these are the pieces that are coming in your box. Plus you'll get a little um, container of glitter, and you will get a little container of gloss to put on the eyes and on the blood so it looks like it's bloody. It'll make it look wet. And then you could add Mr. and Mrs. Frankenstein if you want. And we'll be doing instructions um, for our resource page, which will be free, but you can also refer to the video from last year. And then we also have the little witch. And for Courtney's birthday, we will be um, painting that after we finish with our hedgehogs while your boxes are en route to you. And we will also do a technique sheet that will be downloadable for her as well. So you could add these to your boxes. Like these three will fit with your in your box. Mm -hmm. um, and those then we would cover the shipping. You just have to message us that you want those. Or if there's something else you wanted instead, as long as we can get it in your box, Cordy can add it to your invoice and we'll cover the shipping on it. So try to pay your invoices as quick as you can if you want get shipped before Labor Day, otherwise it will go out on Tuesday if, you, if we have late payments. Um, if there's anything I can help you with, just send me a message. A lot of times I will ask for a picture. That just helps me understand where you're at more. I'm glad to help anyone um, that way. I've kind of had a busy week with that this week, but that's great. Glad to help help everyone out. Um, it was 90 here this week. It's supposed to cool off tomorrow, so we're looking for our forward to our fall weather. Kids go back to school next week, so it'll kind of be a busy week with stuff. We're shipping the boxes. I need to log molds that we have. Just kind of a lot going on yet, but it's it's getting there. Then we're looking forward to opening the shop and showing you guys that little journey along the way when we go from lime green to probably a really light gray and a classroom, and it should be fun. I know my local ladies are waiting, and hopefully you guys enjoy seeing the pictures that we share about that. So have yourselves a great week and everybody stay healthy and safe. So good night. See you next week.